types of lighting gags. There's fire gags, there's TV gags, there's kind of computer light panel gags, and there's also the tried and true headlight gag. And that's what we're gonna go through tonight. We've lit this arena uh, of a driveway. We have uh, one car with xenon headlights, another car with old standard headlights, and we're going to talk about how we mimic and bring those specific lights to life. The scene we're gonna shoot is somebody lurking in the shadows uh, on the tree. The car is gonna pull up. It's gonna sweep into the driveway. We're gonna cut into that scene by sweeping the headlights across Monette's face. Now, the thing is, could this work practically? Well, if the headlights are bright enough and you can get them close enough and the timing is right, absolutely. But do you want the sound of walking and creaking through the trees and the leaves and stuff? Well, a headlight gag like this just requires an electrician to just pan it, not physically drive the car, which will have a sound issue, which will have a lot of other problems that go along with it. Not only the engine moving, but also the car driving. This enables you to capture the sound perfectly as she's sneaking through the, the uh, brush and the leaves and the trees, and we can mimic that uh, head-like effect on her face. Now, there's also times when you're not able to physically get a car where you would want a headlight. If, say, we want to mimic a headlight coming in through my front window, the car driving down the road, coming up and turning, that might kind of work and it might look like it's going to be powerful enough, but it really won't be on camera. So this type of gag will be able to push that, will be able to sweep it through the middle of the house. It'll play on the ceiling, play on a face, play on the walls, and then you're able to keep this beautiful moving light, which is what the headlight gag is. All right, this is the professional version of the headlight gag, but what if you don't have all this stuff and you just have some C-stand pieces and parts around? I'm gonna show you how you can build that. Starts with a baby C stand and a grip head. I'm gonna put that right down here. I'm gonna lower this so I can get a better perspective on it. Back in my gripping days, I started out as a uh, as a grip truck driver, so I thought it would be kind of cool to get back to my roots here and fire up this specific headlight gag that you, we used to build when I didn't have all the necessary bells and whistles of the beautiful junior triple header. And it kind of starts with just, these things, things are like tinker toys. So you kind of put them all together in a nice way. And then we're gonna have to slide this a little bit so we can extend this one. Extend this one out a little bit so I can match the width of a, of a car, which is around, you know, four and a half feet. So I'll get that one out to here. And then I'll extend this one out just a little bit more. Get that there. We'll tighten this one all up. Lock that one in. Rotate this one, like that. Tighten all your grip heads. All right, so now I grab our Matthew pins. Drop that in like that. Drop that in like that. And now you have a beautiful headlight gag that can swing and move exactly like our triple riser headlight gag over here. So you're able to move and you can, let's fire this up for a second. You can splay out your beams so it's a wider spread so it 
hits the lens and hits that lens. So you can play wherever you'd like them to actually be uh, in regards to how far the, the gap is between the two beams of light. Okay, go ahead and kill that. So here's kind of a more of a C-stand version of it. This is the junior triple header version of it. Now you can go, as long as you got some C-stand bits and pieces, you can also DIY it. These ETCs will go on to here, no problem. Or you can use redheads or whatever, baby babies, whatever type of lights you have, as long as you're gelling them consistently to whatever headlights you have uh, in your scene. So let's talk about how to DIY it. Well, we don't need these pins, so we can remove these. We can go to some ceramic sockets and we can kind of put these K5 kits that are very inexpensive and we can set up our little halogen 75 watt bulbs and we just have to get a little closer for this to, uh, to all work. So it was a little more, a little more powerful. So I'll put my other one over here. Like that. All right, power this baby up. Okay, and now I have kind of a DIY version. Again, you can rotate your uh, beam so it, it's a little spread wider. So if you don't want them too close together, you can rotate it so I can spin that one way or the other, spin that this way. So now I can have that effect sweep the lens and then sweep the lens again, All right? So maybe that gap's too big so I can narrow that back in there. So now I'm sweeping the lens and sweeping it again, which is kind of the whole feel of what the headlight gag is all about. Now, go ahead and kill that. Now, to match the halogens, let's see what the color temperature on these halogens are so we'd see where we need to get that dialed in at. So go ahead and power those back up and we'll meter our halogen, which is about 2780. So that's gonna require a good amount of gel on here probably a full CTB to be able to get it to the required 4,400, 4,338. So this is gonna, full CTB on this light will get you to match your Xenon uh, headlights. And probably a quarter CTB will get it, or a third will get it to match the old school one. A little more than a third. Let's go half. It was old school. We're about 3,400, 3,482. So with a little gel and a little innovation, and you can get even brighter uh, floodlights or spotlights. So these are floods, halogen floods. You can go with 150 watt halogen spots and mimic very much like the very powerful 575 watt triple header over here. Go ahead and kill the lights. And now let's go and develop the night scene where we use the power of the headlights and balancing the different color temperatures in a nighttime exterior and bring this to life.